It's baseball season, so that means it's time to wear all the raglans. I'm gonna show you how you can make your own raglan t-shirt pattern from any raglan you have hanging out in your drawer, and we're gonna do that right now. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Elizabeth from ElizabethMavis.com helping you sew something creative. So in my house, it's totally baseball season. My three boys are doing baseball again and I love baseball season. It's the one time where I'm like where I feel like as a sports mom, it's not so crazy. It's a lot more a lot more relaxed. And so I got it got me thinking about what I could sew that would kind of match along with the season and the spirit of the season. And it came to the obvious answer, which is the classic baseball tee, which is really just a classic raglan tee. So what the heck is a raglan tee? So <laughs> a raglan tee, it's it doesn't it doesn't have the the shoulder seam right there. It has the seam kind of at an angle. It's a lot more relaxed fit. And it was actually named after a Lord Raglan who I guess he I guess he injured himself in battle and he couldn't he couldn't get his his coat on anymore. So he had somebody he had one of his tailors create this different sort of jacket that he could put on by himself so he so he could have some more independence as a person. So that's how this seam came to be about. But what what I realized the more that I play with raglan sleeves is that there's so much variation and there's so many cool things that you can do with it. So I'm gonna do a long series on raglan t-shirts and we're gonna do lots of stuff with it. The first thing that we're gonna do today is gonna we're gonna make a pattern from a raglan t-shirt that you have. Just find one that fits you. I went to the thrift store and I found this one and it's I don't know, it was two bucks. It, it was nothing, nothing precious, nothing fancy, just basic, and it fits really well, so I'm going with it, right? You can, of course, use your own raglan t-shirt pattern if you have a favorite. I've got lots of ideas for that. I wrote a blog post about that, which I will link to, and if you want to join us in the next video when we're sewing up our raglan tees, then go ahead and do that. But after we after we make our pattern and we sew up the initial tee, then it's gonna be a hack fest. And we're gonna do really cool stuff. We're gonna do cool things with sleeveless variations of raglan tees, and I'm not gonna tell you because you'll just have to watch. It'll be really cool, and we're just gonna build on those little tiny blocks so you can see how you can take a basic pattern and turn it into something that's totally your own because that's what this channel is about sewing something creative right so it's my credo and i want to pass it on to you and show you how to do it so ultimately you can discover your own creativity in your sewing so a quick note before we get into the tutorial about how to put together your own raglan t-shirt pattern you will need as i already said a raglan t-shirt that fits you <laughs> reasonably well and besides that you also need a pen everybody's got a pen and you want a ruler too a clear ruler that's super helpful if you don't have a clear ruler just use a regular ruler use what use what you got use what you got and then you also need some sort of tracing material so you can use tissue paper if you use tissue paper it's going to be a little harder for you because you won't be able to see through to where the to where the the seam lines are on your thing but if you do have tissue paper such as this and you want to use that what you can do instead of tracing like I'm going to show you is you can use one of these pattern wheels it's got these little tiny teeth on it hello teeth and you can kind of trace right along where the seam line is and that can be a really good option. You could also use Swedish tracing paper. That is a really good option. And here is my favorite, and which I'm gonna use in the video, let's just see. This is soil separator cloth. I get this at Home Depot in the garden section. It comes in 36 inch wide by 150 feet, so it's 50 yards. I think it's like $15, something like that. Um, so it's not terribly expensive. What's really cool about it is that it's, it is very transparent. You can see my hand there. So you can see your seams really, really well. It's going to be a little tricky to see on camera. So I have better shots of 
photographs that I took so you can see see the process at least a little bit better of what, what, what it is that we need to do to get through this pattern. So if you've never tried cloning before, this is a really great place to start. It's super not intimidating. There's only four pieces that we have to deal with and one of them you don't really have to clone. You can just sort of measure it and it's very simple, very simple. So do not be intimidating. This is totally a beginner friendly sort of make your own pattern adventure. <laughs> Let's jump into the tutorial and I will see you on the other side of this. So here I have my raglan, nothing fancy, but it fits me well. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this and make a pattern from it. So I've laid it out flat on the table, kind of smoothed out everything, and now I'm gonna mess it up <laughs> by folding everything together so that the side seams are matching and also all of the interior seams are matching, so all the sleeve seams and things. But I want to make sure that, the, that I'm looking at half of the front. And so I'm matching center front down the center front line and the side seams and then the center back is also going to match there. So I'm just going to kind of smooth everything out on the table so everything is nice and nice and flat on the table. So I'm going to kind of fuss the, the sleeve around so that those sleeve seams are matching. That way I get a really accurate look of what my sleeve is going to look like and so I get a good pattern from this. So I'm smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. And then I'm going to grab my soil separator cloth. You can see I can see right through it so it's really awesome for this. It's going to be really difficult for you to see so I'm just going to walk you through it as I'm tracing it. So I put the soil separator cloth over it and I am going to grab a pen and I'm going to draw a straight line and that's going to be my center front line. And I didn't get the line 100% the first time which you can't really see but I, I kind of had to fix it later but that's okay. So I'm just going to use my pen and go along all of the seams with my pen, just, just going exactly where that seam is. So you can see I've got that, that front pattern piece traced even just that quickly. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the back piece. So I'm smoothing everything out. I'm going to make sure that those sleeve seams are matching, the side seams are matching, and then I've got a nice straight center front, center back. I'm going to draw that straight line. And then I'm going to use my pen to go along right where, the, right where the seam lines are and right where the hems are as well. You can see I've got a nice curve back, which is, is really a classic baseball, baseball tee thing. Now for the front, for the sleeve, it's going to be a little tricky. We've got to make a, we have to make a half piece of it and a half piece. So I'm going to mark that the I'm going to flatten everything out, make sure the underarm seam is flat, and I'm going to mark with a pin halfway, halfway, just right, right, on, right on the table where that, where that fold is on the sleeve. And I'm going to mark the front side of the sleeve, again, the same way, just following along with my pen where the sleeve lines, where the seam lines are and where the hem line is. And now I'm going to flip my sleeve to the back side, and I'm going to line up my, my straight line that... I, that, I, that I drew for this the, for the sleeve and I am going to trace the back side of the sleeve as well. And I'm just marking to what that what that is. I'm marking that that's the back of the sleeve and the front of the sleeve. So there's my sleeve. I put it on the, the paper so you can see it a little bit better. I had to true up the bottom side of the sleeve, and that's something that you want to do with all of your with all of your seams. If they look a little wonky, go ahead and smooth them out with your pen. And you want to now just double check that everything just looks right. Um, again, I'm just I'm just folding folding the side of the, the sleeve together to make sure that they're the right length. I was off a little bit, so I had to fix one side of it. And so, because what we've traced are the seam lines, so we have to add seam allowance to it because otherwise it's going to be too small and it ain't going to fit you. So when it comes to adding seam allowances, I have this nifty gadget on my, on my rotary cutter. It has a little, a little arm and you can literally cut while adding the seam allowance to it. So this goes along the, where, the seam where the seam allowance line is. So if I flip it around, and if I was going to add seam allowance to there, then I would just go along there and it would cut it at the same time as adding the seam allowance. It's really cool, 
but also doesn't make these anymore, which is really, really sad. No worries. There's lots of different ways you can add seam allowances, but the simplest way is just with a plain old ruler. So here I've got my my front piece. We're going we're gonna to pretend that this is my front piece that I just did for my raglan tee. And if I wanted to add my hem allowance there, then I would just add my hem allowance down at the bottom. Whatever that is. And then I want to add my, my seam allowance. I really like three eighths of an inch for side seams in knits because I can do that on my serger without worrying about it. And then when you go around a corner, then just kind of make little points of it and then we'll just true it out in the, when we get done with it. So even though this isn't a real pattern, you can kind of quickly see how, how it is that you get to making seam allowances. just a really quick and simple kind of way. It, it seems like it's going to be a big to-do and it's going to take you forever. It actually goes pretty fast. So if we're pretending here, then that's that's my front piece and then that's my, that's my seam allowance. Seam allowance. That way, when I go to sew it up, it's going to be the right size that I want it to. So that's for adding seam allowances. So go ahead and add seam allowance to all of your pieces. So I'm adding, I'm adding my hem allowance. I like, I like a, an inch and a quarter for the the for the bottom hem, and three quarters of an inch for the for the sleeve hems. And now the other thing we have to match, we have to make a pattern piece for, is the neckband. So we want to measure the width of the neckband times two plus a seam allowance. So for me, that ends up being 10 and an eighth inches. And we're going to cut this on the fold because I'm folding my neck, my neck together. So if I cut it on the fold, then I have enough. If you only cap, cap half, you only have binding for a half of it. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to cut this piece on the fold. My, my on the fold, measurement is 10 and an eighth inches and plus I'm going to add I'm going to add a quarter inch for for a seam allowance for that so that ends up being what <laughs> 10 and three eighths inches <laughs> that I'm going to cut on fold and then my my width is the the neck times two plus the seam allowance so that ends up being two inches total so now I retrace my my pattern pieces onto tissue paper so you can see it the last thing we want to do before we cut everything out is to double check the seams and make sure that they are equal length. So first take your sleeve and fold it in half and make sure that that underarm seam is the same length. If it's not, then go ahead and adjust it. Do the same thing with your front piece and sleeve. So line up the, the front sleeve seam and use your finger to pivot the seam all the way up towards the neckline. Just match that seam and just walk that seam all the way up towards the neckline. And if it's not the same length, then go ahead and fix it. And do the same thing for your back piece as well. So put the back on top of the sleeve and lining up that back sleeve seam and just walk that sleeve, that seam all the way up to the top. And if it's off a tiny bit, then just go ahead and fix it. Finally, stack this the side seams together with the front and the back to make sure that they are the same length as well. So that is how you put together your pattern for your raglan tee. And stay tuned tomorrow when I will be showing you how it is that we sew it together. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Um, I would love to have lots of people and see what kind, what your raglan t-shirts look like. I know I had a good time making making mine. I made I made two actually in the past in the past two days, kind of working working this tutorial out. And this one this one that I'm wearing now sports some fabric that I block printed. And if you're interested in the block printing tutorial, I showed that in another video, and I will link that below as well. But I hope you're having a wonderful day and happy sewing. I will see you in the next video. What's up guys? I hope you enjoyed this raglan sleeve cloning tutorial and check out what else is going on here on Elizabeth Made This and I will see you in the next video. Bye!